Okay, let's uh, look at this. So, well, uh, um, I forget how these are split, so I'm just gonna, again, just uh, do one part at a time. Um, and I think it's gonna answer it correctly. You need a restoring force that's uh, uh, proportional to the distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, so this is the kind of the description of simple harmonic oscillator motion, and this result from this. So really, if uh, kind of presence of one or the other condition actually implies the other condition. So you only re really need one of them. You don't need, I mean, you will see both when you have simple harmonic motion. But if you have one, you know there must be the other one. They go together. So, so I would say it's wrong on the basis that it said the two conditions must be met. If one of them is met, then the other is automatically met. If a frequency is not constant, oh, I guess short answer is no. You can call it n harmonic oscillator. Uh, oh, so what is the oscillatory? What is uh, such oscillatory motion called? I be, uh, I don't know if it's gonna get n harmonic oscillation right. Maybe. Nonlinear complex or what about an harmonic oscillation? Uh, um, it might agree because ChatGPT is over eager to agree, so it might. That's fine. Let's go to see. Uh, please give an example. Uh, yeah. uh, pendulum is uh, an example you have seen in lecture. I don't know why the example ChatGPT will give, but it'll probably answer this well. It's the type of uh, question that it gets well. Yeah, pendulum. <laughs> we, we can approximate it as a simple harmonic oscillation for small amplitudes, but for larger ones, it doesn't. Yeah. So. Also, um, kind of molecular bonding and oscillation there too. Uh, that's uh, actually that uh, that kind of non-linearity there is what results in the uh, thermal expansion coefficient. Uh, it's fun, but also kind of upper division solid state physics material. <laughs> Let's move on to the next question. Um, yeah, pendulum clocks. All right. I have no sense if it'll, it'll answer that correctly. Suppose you move from yeah. To slightly greater, so the clock will run faster. Uh, so length will have to be longer. Um, greater restraint for higher, higher frequency, faster. Yeah, length. Yeah, must be increased. Yeah, that's it. Oh. <laughs> and is that the correct period? I guess it is. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Uh, you know, these are the kind of questions that ChatGPT does well. Uh, kind of like trivia type question doesn't really move calculation. Um, with the use of phase shift. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, it does depend on the initial condition. Uh, if we're using sine function to uh, model, what are the initial conditions? Yeah. Um, let's see if it gets it right. Uh, if so, uh, oh wait, that's wrong. Um, if it's a maximum displacement at t equals zero, it has to be cosine, because that's where it's at the largest place it will be, and then it's uh, starting to move. That that described by. Cosine function describes the position. Uh, yeah, that it got it mixed up. Yeah, yeah, it just got it completely wrong. Um, which it, you know, now that I see that the uh, ChatGPT got it wrong, uh, it doesn't surprise me. ChatGPT doesn't know what sine and cosine functions look like. It's, it, one, you know, it doesn't 
actually know anything. It's a large language model. And two, it's a language model, not a graph model. So I'm sure they can uh, train GPT-4 to uh, specialize in answering mathematical questions. But um, so this is just completely wrong because it mixed up sine and cosine. So. All right. Um, so that's uh, this is it.